What's going on guys? Uh, back in the booth today for the second time. Um, I actually just did a 35 minute video on this and didn't hit record. So you know what kind of day I'm having? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But what we're gonna do today, um, we're gonna paint a Magnum square bill in a crawl pattern, a tape crawl pattern that I do. This is actually what it's gonna look like since I've already done it and didn't have it on record, but that's all right. We're gonna go ahead and do it again. And I'm gonna show you all the steps. Uh, first thing I'm gonna say is I, I went ahead and did the base coat. I use Autoborn Sealer White. Uh, I do heat set that. And then I put a coat of iridescent golden white on it and I've let it dry. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I've pre-cut out the tape that I'm gonna use on this, on this bait. I'll do a video on it later. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask me, but it's pretty simple. I just take a piece of tape and I've cut it out. And all I've done is I lay it on a cutting board. I draw it out, take a razor, cut it up, and then I just stick it on the bait. You can add, and I don't throw these away. I just, like I said, I. My booth on this booth is metal, and I just take them off and I reuse them again. I just put it down. It's a very simple technique. Um, now I'll take some gold and black. I like this because the gun that I'm shooting out of is a Creo PS7 771. It's got a 1.8 needle in it. It's very fine. And I don't really have to reduce this paint. I'm shooting on 10 pounds of pressure. And if I could give advice on that, some of the biggest mistakes I made when I first started painting, I wanted to paint on too high a pressure. And this will really take your game up on this if you'll follow it and dial down your pressure and just hit your tape as you're doing it. More on the tape than on the bait. This gun does a great job. I got it at spraygunner.com. They're a group of good guys. Like I said, it's a Creos PS771 with a, a 0.18 needle, like a Micron. That's pretty much what it is. It's just a cheaper version. And like I said, I've had it for about eight months and I love it. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight the eyes black too. And then what I'm gonna do is I have a little stencil. Let me find it. What have I done with it? Hmm. That's what happens when you, you don't hit record and, and you start painting everywhere. There it is right here. This is called a wing ding. It's a little freestyle stencil. You can still get them online. It's a wing ding junior. Um, and what I do with it is I do my, on this type of tape crawl, I use this. I'll just set it on, on my points. Just do a fine line up. And what I'm dipping my brush in is just a small Tupperware container with some sponges with alcohol. Helps with the tip dry. Just like I said, if you when you another tip when you're when you're dipping it in there, always spray it off on a napkin because you don't want to splatter your bait with spider webbing and alcohol and and paint. It's just a it's just a mess. But this is a very simple technique. Just takes a little bit of practice getting used to cutting out your cutting out your crawl patterns on the tape. You can use as many shells as you want. I usually do four. Now the stencil I'm using today is an excellent stencil. Y'all need to look Jeff up at Whitmore Farm. This model stencil is his is skin detail. 
but his stencils are outstanding. Very high quality, nice, gives a great effect. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this modeled one in the middle to do my detail on my crawl and on the top. And I'll use it around the eyes also. But all I do is lay it on and I'm spraying this on low pressure. That's an, like I said, you don't want to spray through a stencil on high pressure. All you'll get is a bunch of splatter, and you're gonna be upset with your bait when you when you've gotten through and you're and you're using your stencil and you and you start blasting paint on it. We'll do a little bit around the eyes and the mouth. Go ahead and do the top. Like I said, it's not a hard pattern to do. I kind of do it a little dark light to kind of give it some contrast. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take the tape off on this side. And you'll really see how clean the lines actually are. Took a little paint off there. but it actually gives it a three-dimensional look. Really kind of, like I said, the little, if you, if you have on um, paint peel up on that, you can actually take the stencil. I can take it, put it over the front, shoot over that just a little bit, and that, that little mistake's gone. That just came because I, I was trying to rush to get the second video going because, I, like I said, I didn't hit record on the first one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other side and I'm going to tape it on. Like I said, it's, this is really not hard. Once you get accustomed to cutting out your tape designs and setting them on the bait, I can even do it upside down now. Like I said, it's just it's just a fun technique to use. It gives a really clean lure. You just don't want to get, like I said, I try to leave the tape up just a tad. You don't want overspray hitting the belly. I like to keep the belly light colored. Some of them I don't, but this one I did. It, I think it just the more colors you have, the better the contrast, the better it's going to look. So we're going to go ahead and just outline this on low pressure. Just go over it very lightly. Like I said, more on the tape than on the actual lure. We're going to go ahead and highlight that eye. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the wing ding again and we're just going to do our, we're just going to set our shell pattern. I'm going to wipe that off because if you stick that on your bait, it's going to leave some bad marks. We're just going to do our shell pattern. Just do it really light. And like I said, there's no... When you cut out your, your tape, you can actually cut up higher humps to know where you want to put your shell pattern. I try to do at least four. There's no right or wrong way. It's just how creative you want to be with it. And then I'll take the stencil back and I'll go ahead and hit some of the modeled small dots on it. I'm even going to do some of the eye. I think that looks good. I mean, if you feel like closing the, the shell up on top, you can. I just don't like doing that. I just like using the modeled stencil here. Some I do. I guess it just depends on what kind of mood I'm in, I guess. But you see what it'll do? It'll actually give it a very natural look. Clean. It's an excellent stencil. Like I said, it's very thick. It's high quality. 
It gives you your money's worth with all the extra stuff around it. So you need to get with Jeff at uh, Whitmore Farm. And like I said, it'll, it'll take your crawl stencils to the next level. I tell you that, all your lures. So we take that off and you see how clean it looks. And what we'll do is I'll go ahead and put a little bit on that other side since I already did this side a little bit where I messed up just to make it match. So we got that matching. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm actually gonna take one of Russ Allen's shell stencils. I've cut these up because they come on a wheel and sometimes I can just work with them better when I can keep them in my hand instead of holding the whole wheel. They're excellent stencils also. I'm gonna be doing a series on Russ's stuff too. And like I said, there's no right or wrong answer with this. I just set it in, try to get a few in here so I can get on um, some more detail on the bottom. And I'll show you more about that in a minute. Light pressure. Just shadow it out. And that's done. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clean my gun out. Um, and then I've pre-mixed Grabber Orange Candy 2O, Dirt Track Brown Candy 2O, and then I mix this right here. I'll show you this before I clean my gun. I use a lot of these F&W inks and I'm mixing it with some Pearl Orange and this is Fire Orange. And it really gives it a vibrant color. I put a little bit on the chest. I don't, you know, I can try to see if you can see that. But it, it really gives a vibrant color uh, to my baits. Uh, and it comes in a multitude of colors. I got a lot of them. I use them quite a bit. And it just kind of adds another dimension to your baits and how they look. And I'll spray it first. But the other thing I was going to tell you was... On these candy two O's, I mix them. My, my mid is a UVLS clear. And they say when you mix that, you need to let it sit for a little while, at least 10 to 15 minutes. And I know that's hard when we're painting baits, but like I said, I, I want to get the best quality out of what I got. So I do that and it seems to work really well. It um so what I did was I mixed one to one UVLS clear with Grabber Candy 2 Orange and Dirt Track Brown Candy 2 Orange. And I just let them sit. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna take this other ink and the pearl orange and I'm gonna paint a little bit on the neck of this bait. This spray is very easy, you can see. It's just, I mean, you don't have to worry about it clogging your gun. And I'll go ahead and cover those dots on the face there. And what I don't want to do is, I still want to leave, I don't want to paint anything below the shell. I like to leave that white for the contrast after I put the candy on. That gives it a really unique look and contrast when it's done. And I don't want to take the candy and make it be the dominant color. I just use it for actually some shading on this bait now, except for the top. I will use the Dirt Track Brown. I like that on the top. I just think it's a real cool color. I think it makes the, the crawls look natural. And it's like I said, these are, these are transparent dyes, so they're, they're going to be very transparent. You just got to be careful on, um, you know, when you paint this on, do not heat set it. Just use your gun. You should never heat set candy. That's raining just a little bit. So I'll put a little bit of coat of brown on this. We'll let it dry. Put a little bit around the eyes because I already know what color eyes I'm using and that's just going to kick off that black and brown. That's going to make it look really natural. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the brown and I'm going to stay to the inside of the shell and up. I'm not going to do the middle of the shell. I don't want to do the middle. All I'm trying to do is make a highlight with the candy. So I'm just going to take it. I'm going to run it up, run it back, run it over, run it up, run it up. I'm going to do it again because I want that brown to be seen. Because when I put my orange in, it's just going to really pop it. But like I said, I'm not putting it below the shell. I want to leave that white. And what I will do is I'm going to take some of the brown and I'm going to run over these black on this, just on the outside of the black to give it some contrast, a little bit of color. starting to run just a little bit and we're going to do the same here we're going to run it just on the inside of the shell okay You can see right here by the chest area where I've put the brown, it makes that orange really jump. We'll put a little bit of orange on the, on the face when we get done, we'll clean the gun out and take this dirt track brown out. I clean my gun out between every color. I don't, I don't ever mix paint, but that's just my thing. Now I'm gonna put the grabber orange in and I'm gonna highlight the inner parts of the shell and I'll do the bottom for a little bit of depth color with the brown and black. And then we'll have the white sides. And like I said, when you put the epoxy on that and after you put your eyes in, it really pops. And this is a great fish catching color too. So we're gonna take the orange. We'll go ahead and do the bottom first. I'm gonna go ahead and run run a little bit of orange over that just to give it a little bit of color and then i'm gonna run a little bit in the middle i don't want to cover all the white up but i want it to have a little bit of orange in there and i'll do a little bit on the top just like i said it's super transparent put a little bit on the mouth And you can see the vibrant colors it has. And I really, to be honest with you, I haven't sprayed that much on it. Um, you don't have to use a lot to get a lot. You just gotta, like I said, just don't cover. I, I, well, what I used to do when I first started, I would muddy up my lures. I'd make them so dark that you really couldn't see the detail that I was doing. And, and I've learned not to do that. Because like I said, with the white belly and the contrast with the black, brown, and orange, and the orange chest, and then when I put the eyes in, it's really going to pop. Like I said, do not, I mean, I don't. I was told you couldn't heat set candy by the people at Auto Air, and I don't do it. So what I do is I'll take and clean my gun totally out, and then I'll take the air out of my airbrush, the cool air, and I'll go ahead and dry it off so I can put my eyes in. But it's a very easy technique. It's not hard. You got to play with it. Like I said, when I first started doing it, um, you, you just got to, you got to take some time and just practice cutting out your stencils. Just practice cutting getting the design you want, and don't forget, don't throw them away. I've got tape on the bottom of this table on this whole side of my booth, which you can't see, because I'm, I'm still getting used to running this camera. Um, the whole side is, is tape that I've used on something that I've done with a lure, and I just reuse it again. It's gonna save you money, but it's also gonna save some designs that you may have had that you really love, that you can continue to use and make baits with.
Okay. All right. So the eyes I'm going to use today are from backwateroutfitters.com, Kerry White. It's actually a glass eye. It's a fire orange red eye. I really like it. I've used it on a few baits before. It's a little smaller than what I want. This, this lure takes about a 10 millimeter eye. This is a little bit smaller than that. I just don't have one that I really like in this color. So you have to glue the glass eyes in. They're not like some of the other ones I do where you can actually just adhesive them in. And this one's a little bit kind of difficult because the eye is a little bit smaller than what it, what it calls for, but, but I like it and I think it gives it a great look. It really makes the lure pop. And I'll just hold it in place until it bites. But the tape method is a very good method to learn if you like doing crawls. Crawls are probably my favorite thing to do. It just gives such clean lines. I mean, I can freehand stencil do it, and I like doing that too, and I, and I will do videos on that because I love the stencils that I have. But I think you have to be a little versatile and stretch yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone when you're airbrushing just to keep you going. And that's the bait right there. I hope that, um, that you learned something new. Uh, if you have any more questions for me, I'm not going to epoxy this one on camera because we did that yesterday. Uh, but I will do, I am going to do some videos on KBS and I will do some on DEF CON also to show you the difference. And we probably, I had a suggestion today from one of the guys uh, to do a durability test on all three. I mean, I think that's a great idea. I never really thought of that, but I'm going to do that too. But like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is my first painting video. So like I said, if you have any questions, put it on the comments as my paint's raining from the sky. And I'm going to get out of here, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.